yeah, I really thought I've seen it all, guys, when it comes down to working with solid state drives and hard drives, but uh, this thing was really something off the next level. I can't really say that it's surprising that some devices would act this way. This got me thinking that maybe this is a normal behavior for these types of devices when they're starting to fall apart. So I started digging into it and I don't have uh, anything really solid as far as the uh, technology and the way of recovering them. But so far, I had more than one case that acts exactly like the one that you will about to see in this video. The SSD we're working with today is a WD Blue SA510. Uh, this is a common unit, not the greatest quality. What are the challenges uh, that we're going to be up against here today? So I have marked the, the patient with the little uh, letter P. Uh, and I have a donor here that I was lucky enough to obtain in uh, one of the local uh, computer stores. So let me demonstrate what uh, we should be getting as a working device and what we're getting on the failed device. So we connect the uh, good working device first to PC3000 on channel 2. This is a SATA SSD. We don't need to use channel 1. So I switch over, power up. The consumption level is 60 milliamps. And uh, if we go into universal utility, this unit does not have a vendor specific utility. Uh, like I said, it's not a supported device. It's got WD blue, it gives us all the parameters, everything looks good. If we go into sector edit, uh, and let's say we want to um, uh, make sure that for testing purposes later, we have something here that we can recognize. So I'm going to type in hello YouTube and we're going to record this to the drive. Now when we go to read sector uh, zero, we have this on that first line, right? I'm going to power this off and uh, remove the device. Now we take our patient and plug that in. Here's what I found uh, when I plugged the patient in. So I would say that this is the first time I see behavior like this and that is the reason why I wanted to uh, get a donor just to get rid of the potential uh, possibility that this may be related to the board and not the NAND. Maybe the controller is acting up, maybe something else on the board that's supposed to be um, providing power to the device is acting up, but we got these uh, dancing lights here. And obviously if we try to enter universal utility, it's going to hesitate. It looks like it's coming ready, but it's dropping into this unknownness. Uh, although it gave us an ID, if we try to read any sector, actually lets us read this. Now this is disturbing, I gotta say, because this is a boot sector of a accessible drive. Actually, I have enough space um, to clone this thing into to clone it into a virtual disk. To say that this is a strange behavior is not to say anything at all, guys, to be honest with you. So let's uh, launch uh, reading. And when it's reading, it's actually reading quite fast. <laughs> I gotta say, I'm very uh, surprised with how it's acting. And you can see that it's actually providing data. This was a system drive. If we uh, grab MFT map, let's scan the whole MFT map. Well, the MFT is captured. Now let's uh, see how much data is used uh, by bitmap. If we select bitmap. So this only had 40, 
seven gigs. I'm not even gonna run scan MFT process on this. I'm just gonna scan this 47 gigabytes. And um, yeah, looks like even acting up like this, it's uh, producing data. I would not say that this would be healthy considering that those lights are jumping like that. I don't know what the problem was previously, but the customer couldn't get access to the data. This came from another data recovery shop uh, that we work with. Can say I have an answer <laughs> as if to why I'm able to image it right now and why this thing is responding and providing that da data. Um, but uh, as you can see, even in some very crazy situations, the data would be getting produced. Once the clone is done, I'm gonna test it on some basic files that I can open up and make sure they're functional uh, to understand that we're reading the content out without bit errors, without a lot of corrupted data, which potentially could be happening right now. Uh, I've seen cases where uh, disk imaging process will display like everything is going normal and uh, data is being produced, but by the time you obtain an image, you find out that a lot of content contains a lot of bit errors, uh, which on map are not reflected by any other color than just perfectly uh, green color as we see on the map right now. Hopefully we're not dealing with this and this case is uh, one of those freaky, uh, situations uh, but I would not be surprised if something like that awaits us in the end so uh, according to statistics and speed of this uh, process right now we need about hour and a half to finish it we got four percent down it's running at about 20 megabytes per second which is great uh, so I'll leave it to it and once it's done I'll swap the chip out I'm curious to find out whether it is the board issue or if it's just a uh, funny glitch but again, I have not seen similar things before. I've seen similar behavior where power just gets dropped and starts back on again. But as we can see on the current monitor here, we're not experiencing any power drops. It just, for some reason, the registers are blinking. So uh, while we are reading the content out, uh, and it seems like uh, it's, at times it's speeding up and at times the device rehabilitates itself. It's uh, running more or less steady now. Uh, we are going to prepare this board because it says uh, the, um, the time that's left is around 20 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the NAND from uh, the donor while we're still cloning the unit and um, try to finish this case up up and find out what was the mystery at this point I kind of want to uh, before removing it actually probably should wait because the registers are not blinking anymore and uh, the speed had significantly improved it's running almost at the full potential it's running at 70 megabytes per second guys and uh, that is a really really good uh, factor here because uh, something tells me that maybe the device decided to fix itself. Now that would be very interesting because I got to tell you yesterday when this was happening when this case was uh, flickering like that I did try to access content on it through um, uh, PC3000 Express and guess what? I did not get access. I didn't get in. I don't know what difference uh, it made uh, by connecting it to portable versus express, but it did not want to work on express. Now I left it running and flickering like that for probably a good couple hours and just kept on going again and again and again and again. And um, Nothing was changing really, so I disconnected it, tried to test it again, fired it up, it didn't come ready, and uh, I figured something out, something is up with this thing and needed further testing. I went out to uh, buy the donor before I went home, got the donor, came home, and here we are. <laughs> We've got some uh, news. The device decided to fix itself while it was gone. So I'm going to lock this uh, donor PCB in for now. I'm not going to rush and uh, remove the NAND because 
we may be in a situation where by the time we're done imaging this device, the registers will stabilize and it will just stay running without flickers.